Papa. <laughs> Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to another interview with the crypto CEOs. I'm Jeremy Britton from Crillionaire.com and Boston Trading Co. And with me, I have Giannis from Notus. Giannis is the founder and CEO of Notus, which is a professional blockchain validator. So Giannis, after you introduce yourself with the proper pronunciation of your name, um, yep. I'll get you to give us two explanations, a 60 second one for the technical nerdy geeks and mm -hmm. a two minute explanation for the people who are just ordinary run of the mill non-coders. Okay. Sure, perfect. So uh, my name is Yanis Iwanidis. Uh, as you mentioned, I'm founder and uh, CEO of Noders. So uh, we are professional validators and we are pre developers. Uh, we are kind of, in, in a way, we are the most optim ROI optimized vehicle of investments in blockchains. Uh, because the infrastructure that uh, we are um, uh, running for blockchains and uh, the work we do for them uh, um, makes us the most ROI optimized uh, uh, investment vehicle in the blockchains and pretty much uh, well no other fund can compete with ROI we can get. Just because like uh, we uh, produce lots of value both for blockchains, for end users, uh, well pretty much for the whole crypto space. Make sense? Now, was that the complicated version or was that the not complicated version? That was both. Like, I mean, the first one was the short <laughs> one and then I just you know, continued with the more kind of, you know, uh, simple one. It, it, still sound, it still sounds very complicated. So I know that you know, people who are investing in crypto for the first time, you know, they buy a couple of coins that they like. And sometimes on different exchanges, they say you can stake your coins. Yeah. And people go, what's staking? Well, it's kind of like leaving your money at the bank rather than taking money home and putting it into a safe. Obviously, in the bank, right. you might earn 4% interest. Um, whereas staking on a crypto exchange, you can make a, a slightly bigger reward, but isn't there a higher risk doing it that way? Well, look, there are two. Well, it's, it's a bit different if you stake on uh, our nodes, for example, and uh, if you stake on exchanges. Because the exchanges, they uh, they custodians, so they keep your tokens. And so you, you have you know the risk that uh, the exchange might um you know disappear we've seen this uh well this stuff quite uh, quite a few times already while if you stake on our nodes we don't hold your tokens so your tokens have been frozen on your wallet and you just kind of give us the right to vote on your behalf uh, uh in different um votings that uh, happen in one specific blockchain and because kind of the vote uh on your behalf you receive a guaranteed uh yield uh, that might be you know five percent ten percent depends on the uh, blockchain and the token you're staking. So it's pretty much uh, risk-free uh, because again, we don't hold your tokens. Uh, it's I, I sleep pretty well at night because uh, we can't be hacked, uh, which is beautiful. And um, well, it's it's pretty much silly not to stake because this kind of is basically it's pretty much uh, free money. So uh, I, I see. I think that uh, people who don't stake they just uh, eat through it at the moment and at the moment and they just don't know that staking exists and so they don't know you know how it really works. So some, some people are not staking because they don't know how to stake or they've never heard of staking. Um, but there may be some people who, you know, a couple of years ago, we had FTX, we had Celsius, and people were staking their coins on another exchange. And as you say, that exchange disappeared and their money's gone. So how do we absolutely know that even if something happens to you, even if something happens to your business, we're still going to keep our coins? Yeah. That, that's, that's the beauty of our business. Again, as I mentioned, that's why I sleep at, uh, really well at nights. And it's why we kind of, uh, there's a huge difference between staking uh, on exchanges and uh, on our nodes. And usual, uh, usually also I want to mention is that um, usually exchanges give a uh, way smaller percentage uh, for staking because they keep, you know, kind of a healthy percent for themselves uh, because the kind of the staking is not their main business and they kind of, you know, they just one of the uh, kind of features they offer to their uh, users. Excuse my puppies going bananas. <laughs> so you, you were saying before that the, the coins actually stay in my wallet. Yeah. So how how do, how do they get locked up when, I, when I'm staking with you, but I'm not staking with you? You've got control of them, but you don't actually take them? Well, we, we call it staking, but in a way, it's just delegation of the voting rights. So your tokens are being frozen on your wallet. So you can't, you know, send them to someone or sell them, you know, uh, during the time when you are staking. 
So you, you delegate to us your rights to vote on your behalf. Uh, we can keep, keep on voting and you keep on getting uh, the, the yield. If you want to unstake, if you want to, let's say, uh, sell your tokens, send them uh, to someone, et cetera, et cetera, uh, you have to unstake them. And so uh, there is usually an unstaking period, which, which depends on uh, on the blockchain. Sometimes it might be five minutes, might be, you know, a few days. Uh, they get unfrozen and then they kind of you free to do, you know, whatever you want to them. But as, as soon as you kind of, uh, they get unfrozen, you stop getting the yield. Make sense? Yeah. Sim similar to how, how term deposit works in the bank. Like I can lock it up for yeah. three months, but then if I change my mind, I need the money, I can go in and get it, you know, literally the next exactly. day, but I, I'm not going to get the returns. So exactly. the returns from, from different coins, are they all, all different returns and different lockup periods? Yeah, it, it all depends uh, on the blockchain. So as I mentioned, you know, some blockchains have um, a period of you know, five minutes. Some might have, you know, a few days, a few hours. It all depends. And the yields, uh, the percentage, uh, the yield percentage is also depends on the blockchain. I think that the lowest is somewhere around uh, three something, maybe three point five, and it might go, you know, up to um, 40, 70 percent uh, per year. Forty percent per year. Yeah. Wow. Okay. It's, it's a, you, know, you know, the thing is that you know the idea here is that you know the the younger the blockchain, mm -hmm. uh, kind of the bigger the percent they want to give, you know, to their stakers. Mm -hmm. And as long as as soon as kind of they get kind of more uh, kind of fundamental and popular and so on and so forth, they kind of start decreasing the percent because kind of th therefore you have let's say less risk uh, staking your tokens because if you stake your tokens let's say in the frozen period and frozen period let's say is uh, like three days, if uh, uh, kind of a crash happens on the market, you can't you know uh, sell your tokens really fast. Mm -hmm. So they kind of they, they want to uh, to incentivize more you know uh, the stakers. Uh, with a big percent, so the stake you know as much as possible, and therefore kind of the price of the token is going to be a bit more a bit more stable uh, and less uh, volatile during different turmoils uh, on the market. So the price is more stable because less people can sell it more quickly. Is that what you mean? Uh, yes, and also like I mean, and, and also it's really important for the blockchains that that as many tokens as possible are being staked because uh, uh, the more tokens are staked, the more secure is the blockchain. Right. Does that make sense? You're saying you're saying new, newer blockchains. Pay more, so something like Bitcoin or Ethereum that's been around for ten years. Bitcoin don't, 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 that doesn't have uh, staking. We're talking only about uh, proof of stake blockchains. I would say that at the moment, well, approximately maybe eighty, ninety percent of the blockchains uh, utilize the proof of stake uh, consensus, uh, while the blockchain, uh, while the Bitcoin is uh, proof of work, so it, it doesn't has uh, doesn't have uh, staking. But Ethereum and I don't know Solana, Aptos, Sui, Celestia, and so on and so forth, they all have staking. Right. And so it's, about it's, it's, it's really beneficial for the blockchains also, you know, uh, to have, you know, as many uh, tokens staked as possible. Uh, the, the idea and the concept of uh, airdrops have been introduced. I guess uh, people who kind of have heard about them. So if you stake your, for example, TIA, the token of uh, Celestia, uh, you would also get, uh, you would get your, uh, the yield and you would also get different airdrops of uh, like different projects that have been built on top of Celestia. Oh, like that have, have, have you know, kind of partnerships, yeah, which is also like I mean, pretty much free talks for you. So not staking if you kind of a uh, long-term holder is well pretty, pretty much silly. I would say that I would say that um, only traders should not stake because they kind of you know they have to sell, buy, sell, buy, etc., etc. While if you buy uh, tokens and you want to uh, keep them at least for a couple of months, staking is just no brainer. Yeah. Okay. So is is there other companies out there who are doing this sort of thing? Definitely. Definitely. Uh, why, why, why are you better? Pardon? Why are you the best? Uh, well, I wouldn't say that we are the best. I would say that we are one of the best. Uh, <laughs> because, I mean, the market is uh, is quite big, and we have you know big players who have uh, started their businesses uh, you know three four years before us. So they're definitely you know bigger than us. They kind of already you know multi billion companies, and some of them are being uh, backed by you know big funds like you know Coinbase and so on and so forth. While we're kind of uh, in, uh, I would say we are the second wave. Uh, of uh, validators and what differenti uh, differentiates us from uh, the majority of, uh, and I would say pretty much 99% of other validators is that we kind of, we are active contributors to development of uh, uh, lots of blockchains. So what we do apart from, uh, so obviously, I mean, we, we uh, provide all sorts of highly reliable infrastructure, validator nodes, RPC, GRPC, things, lots of different, you know, um, infrastructure stuff. Uh, then we uh, kind of try to be really as helpful as possible because we feel that we have uh, skin in the game if we validate the blockchain, so we develop different tech stuff, we develop community apps, we organize events, we do marketing, we help with funding, and so on and so forth. And because we sort of uh, really smart money uh, for uh, these blockchains, 
uh, they kind of really uh, prefer to um, talk with us than with our uh, you know competitors. And I would say that you know there are maybe hundreds, maybe even thousands, or maybe more validators. I would say that now we are kind of in the top 50, and I think that we have pretty good chance to get to top 10 uh, within next uh, next year. Fantastic. We have so, we have approximately. I would say that you know the uh, uh, the market uh, is looks at the moment like uh, maybe 15, 20 validators are the ones that uh, kind of buy in the places uh, in uh, active sets because the, the amount of validators is limited. So usually it's around you know 100. Most of the blockchains have limited a limited amount of uh, validators can validate and really earn money for providing uh, infrastructure. Uh, then maybe. Uh, 40, 50 teams, uh, teams you know, who contribute, and between these teams, I would say that we are one of the best because the product uh, that we kind of uh, um, build are just pretty much unique, and we have like a queue of blockchains who have uh, uh, asked us to build for them, you know, the community app. Uh, I don't know, maybe if you want, I can show you uh, how it looks like, or maybe you can share the link with your audience later. Yeah. Would you prefer? Definitely, can definitely I we'll put some link, put some links. Okay. Have a look there, where it's... So, so I, I would give you like a Celestia Hub so people can jump in. Maybe just uh, I'll give you like a uh, short introduction of what it is. So pretty much it's a portal totally devoted to one specific blockchain and people can find all the information about this blockchain in one place. So that's a deep dive in the blockchain itself. There's a library of all the projects being built on top of these blockchains with uh, descriptions and so on and so forth. Uh, that's educational materials for end users and developers. Dev tools with uh, RPC, GRPCs, uh, different tooling, and so on and so forth, and Advanced Explorer with a uh, well, pretty much uh, incredible amount of different metrics people might need, you know, to uh, deep dive in the blockchain. And this is a, a kind of concept that is going to be ever evolving. So we're going to be adding more stuff uh, um, later on. Along with that, we also like usually run uh, Twitter fan pages and organize daily campaigns, and so on and so forth. So you would be you would share, you know, the link uh, with the audience so they can uh, open it, play with it. It's, it, it looks pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, and, and that's why we have, we do have you know a queue of blockchains who have uh, already ordered this uh, uh, this apps for them, and uh, kind of our business model is that we kind of we build this up for sort of for free uh, for free, and we just receive delegation from the uh, blockchain themselves. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that yeah, there's like there's, there's some um, some companies that pay you three percent, some of the projects pay you up to forty um, percent. Is, is there is there companies that you say no to? Is there companies that you look at and just go, it's, it's too high risk, we don't like this project, we don't like what it stands for? How do you, how do you reject them? Well, almost not. Uh, to be honest, like, I mean, you see, it's, it's crypto space, so things can change really rapidly. And sometimes we've seen, we've seen lots of times in the cases when, let's say, a project which kind of looked intermediate, mm. to say the least, uh, at some point, you know, big ones come along, they inject, you know, shitloads of money, and then poof, you have Solana. <laughs> uh, so, so these, these things these things happen. So uh, in the first place, we try to to just jump on as many as, po as possible, and then we just because we collaborate with them really closely, we just see how things are being done, you know, on behind the scenes. Because like as an investor before, like I started this project, I was just a crypto investor since uh, 2017. Uh, I was just you know looking on different marketing, you know, the kind of pitch decks, uh, websites, and so on and so forth. So that's what you know the project tells us about the project. Well, when we as validators collaborate with them and we, we sit with them, you know, in in the Discord, we can see, you know, what they're really doing, you know, how they kind of keep the work, what they're doing, the plans, you know, how they ship stuff and so forth. So we do know, uh, well, way more. We have, we have more information than I would say regular investors, and that's why we kind of uh, we can jump in the project and maybe later on kind of just uh, leave it because like it's just a piece of crap. This has happened happen a few times, and those like you see, our kind of business model is really, is really robust. Because like we don't uh, inv we, 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 we don't invest uh, in tokens or we invest you know really rarely, so we kind of have only the cost of uh, uh, sustaining the infrastructure, and we have then you know the delegation and so if the delegation the only some delegation cover for us you know the cost of uh, infrastructure and the team then we kind of can keep this blockchain. If not, it's kind of we press one button, bam, done, no cost at all. So kind of it's pretty much risk free for us. Okay, so th these. These projects that might be paying, say, 10%, 15%, you're just taking a little bit of cream off the top of that so you can pay for your running costs? Uh, yeah, look, it's, it's really important to understand that, you know, so we have the staker, so let's say a retail investor or like have a fund, they stake our, their tokens, you know, with us, and they receive, like, let's say, 10, 10%, 10%, 40%, 20%, 5%, whatever it is, and we just take a percent of their percent. Make sense? Yeah, yeah. And this percent that we're getting, you know, covers our costs, you know, of 
a sustainable team the kind of well the, the cost of running the company and running the specific node then we can obviously you know it's just profitable so we run this node it might be at some point that we kind of we see that the project is kind of uh, really good and they might just go into difficult times because like i know something happened maybe market conditions so we can keep maybe some nodes uh for maybe months uh kind of uh, um not not producing kind of profit for us because of kind of belief in the project this has happened maybe a couple of times not so often but for the most part 95 98 percent of the uh nodes we're running is profitable profitable so we don't have any problems at all which, which were the projects that you really believed in even when nobody else did well i still believe in nim they still they actually they still went through difficult times uh i think that you know they have pretty good uh, technology pretty new technology because you know in, uh, between blockchains i've seen well i know well hundreds of blockchains i deep dived in most of them and uh, well frankly speaking like 80 percent of them don't really don't really offer anything special they just change the name and say oh, okay we have like maybe i you know twelve thousand tps oh we have like thirteen thousand tps and we called like whatever so and even the white papers are usually it's quite often that are pretty much the same while uh, we don't have that uh we don't see that uh that often you know blockchains who kind of really do something different and nim i think is one of the projects that does it they have you know the nim technology and they have the, they have the uh mixed net but they still go into difficult times i kind of still hope that uh they're going to kind of you know survive but let's see how it goes it's, it's keep the market you know it's, it's crazy so so run, run, running your business, I mean, you guys have got the, the validators, you've got the connections, you just rely on people giving you funds. How how difficult is it for you to scale your business if you suddenly had a million new customers turn up tomorrow? No problem at all. The beauty is that, you know, we run the node and, uh, well, any amount of people can stay. It, it doesn't change anything for us. It's only a matter that, you know, we just have to do, you know, some sort of marketing to attract these takers. Mm -hmm. And that's why kind of we're raising funds now. Uh, because we want to build, you know, our own uh, staking platform and do, you know, proper marketing. Uh, because the uh, well, the business is uh, three years old now, three years, you know, and one month almost. Uh, so um, you know, during these three years, we were kind of, you know, focused on producing as much value as possible for the blockchains to get, you know, delegations from them to get to active sets and so on and so forth. Now we have got, you know, to uh, we have approximately 100 million uh, dollars stake on our nodes. It's fluctuating. Obviously, it's a kind of uh, altcoin, so it's kind of fluctuating amount. It's kind of between 50 million to 150. Uh, we have 30 plus uh, blockchains that we validate at the moment. So we have at the moment 43 or 40, 44 uh, test nets. So it's kind of the blockchains are going to launch their mainnet quite soon. And we have 93 uh, blockchains coming soon. So we have been concentrating on producing as much value as possible for the blockchains. And now, and we have at the moment uh, somewhere around you know 20k uh, stakers, retail investors. And now we can raise funds, you know, to build our own staking platforms, do the marketing as I said, and uh, attract uh, well, hopefully millions of stakers. Uh, but for the core business, for the nodes, no problem at all. One node can handle millions of dollars being staked and um, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of millions of people, people staking. Fantastic. So you, you call the business noders just because you've got nodes? There's no hidden meaning, yeah. anything special about that? No. Straight, straight <laughs> <forward. laughs> And this, this was what, 2017 when you started? No, no, 2017 is when I just, uh, as an investor, kind of joined the crypto space and yeah. started educating myself about, you know, the technology and everything around it. Uh, I launched the project, uh, the project in 2021, so it's three years old, as I mentioned. Okay. <laughs> and no downtime, no problems, everybody gets paid on time. Yeah, it's, it's automatic. It's, it's just a smart so, contract. Payment, so payment is, is done automatic. The only way how people can lose money with a, with a um, staking is slashing. So if at some point, let's say we run... Uh, we will uh, say we have a uh, server in I don't know in one place, and there is an earthquake, earthquake uh, or something happens to the server, uh, so it can go down. It would take us, you know, some time, maybe a few minutes, like you know, ten minutes or twenty minutes, you know, to to move the node, the the software to another location, which we can do it like really fast. So the downtime of the of the node might at some point um, be slashed, which means that you know the uh, the stake that uh, uh, is being dedicated to this node will be kind of some amount of uh, tokens will be, will be deducted. So this is the only risk we have. And uh, well, first of all, three years in business, we uh, pretty much never had, you know, this uh, uh, kind of uh, accident. That's first. And second, uh, we're going to have uh, insurance. It's kind of like casco you have for the, that you have for your for your car. If you kind of you know crash it, it's going to be paid. So pretty much no risk. Fantastic. So yeah, where where do you see your business heading in the future? Well, look at the moment. Uh, well, we're kind of uh, growing really fast uh we well i do believe that well approximately one year ago, ago actually i realized that we can 
become a multi-billion company within a couple of years. So the goal for the next year is uh, to become a company that's, that is valued more than uh, 1 billion. We aim to have uh, more than uh, 10 billion uh, um, staked in assets on our nodes. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's kind of you know the first goal we have you know to, to the end of 2025. Obviously, I mean all these numbers they depend on the market conditions. If we have you know bear market, if some kind of you know politics or maybe you know economic conditions you know around the globe might uh, you know, might definitely you know influence influence somehow this uh, our goals. But uh, I'm pretty confident that we definitely can achieve this. Um, also, like I want, one thing I want to mention is that the beauty of our business is that I think that it's one of the uh, rare cases in crypto when uh, the business might and most likely will survive for decades to come, because blockchains, because you know, kind of different narratives might change. You know, DeFi, NFTs, you know, and so on and so forth. While blockchains and uh, which is kind of the the, the bones, you know, of the whole crypto space, they need infrastructure. And we're the guys who kind of who kind of supply them the infrastructure. So uh, the core business, I think, that's uh, definitely going to you know kind of last for decades. For example, we have uh, these blockchains like you know Solana, Cosmos, uh, Polkadot, for example, and so on and so forth. Ethereum, well, Ethereum is maybe not the best example, but anyways. Uh, so Solana, I think, it's uh, was launched in 20, 2018. Mm-hmm. So it's like you know six years old already. So people who, have, who started you know stay, uh, running nodes for Solana, you know, uh, in um, twenty eighteen run nodes for six six years already, which means that you have yet you know the kind of the earnings all day long, every day. So okay. some of these blockchains definitely going to disappear. But uh, yeah, the beauty of our business is that we don't have you know a fixed amount of blockchains for validate. We keep on kind of getting new blockchains, so it's kind of we org- we grow organically regardless of uh, of funding, which is again beautiful. And um, yeah, so the first goal, as I mentioned, you know, for the next year is, uh, as I said, you know, uh, to become like multi-billion company, uh, to have like more than 10 billion staked, and then just keep on growing and expanding and uh, adapting because like you know, crypto space is definitely a, a space that uh, evolves really fast. Innovation happens really fast. For the time being, we have proof of stake. I do think that you know it's gonna last well for the next few years. It's gonna dominate you know the place. Maybe later, we're, maybe later we're gonna see you know some other consensus. But anyways, blockchain is gonna definitely need you know some infrastructure, and we're just gonna be adapting and uh, providing you know uh, first of all infrastructure, and then as much value as possible because we're kind of you know the value oriented company. Fantastic. I, I, I sort of compare the infrastructure plays to you know you're you're the toll roads. And whether we have artificial intelligence, whether we have self-driving cars, motorbikes, trucks, doesn't really matter. Um, and as you say, some of these projects, some of these blockchains may disappear, but you're supplying the infrastructure. And they're always going to need that computational power. Uh, I've got I've got two more questions before we wrap up, mate. Sure. No, number one is where can we find out more information? Where can people read up about Noders and how do they get involved? Uh, well, first of all, I, I can share with you the pitch deck so people can get some information about us over there. Uh, second, I will share the, uh, the links to, with, uh, to our website, to the product, the community app I uh, mentioned, and just like two, two other uh, resources that we kind of, you know, uh, manage, uh, we build them and manage. It's a Cosmos list, that's kind of endpoint uh, list for Cosmos chains. And second one is uh, service for validators, different, uh, well, tech tools and uh, kind of, you know, services for validators and node runners. So I will share all the links and people can look around, play with them and so on and so forth. Okay, so final question, mate. In two years' time, when the company is worth over a billion dollars, I'm assuming you'd be a billionaire. Are we invited to the yacht party? Pardon? Are we invited to the yacht party when you're a billionaire? Definitely, Definitely of course. <laughs> yes, we have the party. <laughs> excellent, excellent. So we've got witnesses. You said yes, we're all going on the yacht party. We would love to. Brilliant. So, okay, this, this uh, interview will be on Spotify and on YouTube. So look in the, in the links, find out more about Notice, how you yep. can hold your own coins rather than delegating them to someone else um, without risk of loss, and you can make you know, 3% up to 40% on your crypto. Giannis, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Best of luck. Cheers. Beautiful. We did it. Bye bye. So, I'll, you, if you send me the links to people to get some more information, like the Twitters and the. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll send you the link, uh, all, all the links right away. Yep. And I'll, I'll have it uploaded to YouTube and stuff in the next couple of hours. Perfect. Fantastic. Thanks a lot. But, by the way, so, people, so if there's going to be some, uh, some investors in they're going to contact you and you're going to let me know and then we take it uh, further. That's right? Yep. Well, they'll, they'll probably go straight through your website. Okay, perfect. Cool. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jens.